What a time to be alive. What a time. Is it? Is it really? Hi. <laughs> Hi. Uh, so it's another vlog. We're trying. We're trying to do this whole life thing, but also at the same time trying to give you guys content. We're really trying. You know, when I say we, I mean me and you. We're really trying to, to, to just keep up with life. Hi, how are you? Uh, my name is Katlaho. You're on the Just Katlaho channel. And um, would love it if you could give the channel a like and a subscribe and a video like and a this and this. I would really love it if you did all of that. It is currently, I don't even know what time it is, yo. Yo, I don't know what time it is. Quarter to two, quarter to two. Um, so it's currently quarter to two and I just got back from work because I am absolutely going through the most when it comes to Valerie. <laughs> I'm on my period. It's day one. I've got period pains. I'm a little annoyed, but it is what it is. And this is where we're going to start the vlog. It's about to rain. I'm currently having a smoothie. Do you see how I'm saying different things all at once? It's because it, it gives you a little bit of an indication of what's going on in my head right now. Always a lot going on. Millions of thoughts at the same time. Um, so <clears throat> it's about to rain, which kind of peeves me off because this morning when I went to work, it looked like it was going to be sunny all day. Um, so I put a load of laundry in my machine thinking that when I come back from work, I'm going to hang it out to dry. Duh. Duh. So that's not going to work. Um, but I think I will put it up. I've got those wooden laundry hanger things that you can, you know, use in the house just in case it rains and all of that. So I think I might put it on there. I'm not going to shoot that portion of the log because what I in there is basically delicate body penty, body bras and stuff. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. I've got a green smoothie because I'm trying to be very intentional with my life when it comes to healthy living and healthy eating. And you guys know I'm very, very particular about that. And one of the things that I decided to do and make sure that I do is have a green smoothie every day. The reason being when it comes to dinner time, I always have meat in the fridge because when I cook, I will cook a bunch of meat. I will never just make two pieces of chicken or one piece of steak or whatever. I'll, I'll, I'll use up the, if it's a bright pack, I'll use it up and then I'll put the meat in the fridge so I can warm it up. So typically what then ends up happening is that come dinner time, I don't make anything else. I'll always just add a salad or just a cha just the meat acha and a couple of other things on the plate so i know that that is in no way enough food to eat um so what i do is normally i'll have an, a, a bowl of oats when i'm at work or i'll have a muffin or something um just to hold me off until i get home and then i make a smoothie every single day monday to friday and then over the weekend i go ham i go crazy um so weather sucks uh which is wonderful and uh, just a little bit of a i don't know a catch-up session last week was really really hard for me last week was really really hard for me i think i put up a um an instagram post and a, a post on my community tab where i was uh talking about how it's really hard to keep going as a content creator when your views aren't necessarily matching the numbers that you have and i know that not all videos are going to have the same views i know that a lot of you guys who watch my content really really prefer the vlogs over and above the sit down videos the numbers are there to prove it which is fine but a lot of the time some of the sit down videos that i film are videos that are really important to me like the book videos or mental health updates or candid with cat or advice with cat any any of that kind of stuff they're really important to me so i include them anyway because what i could do simply is drop one video 
a week where it's like a vlog and then I, but I just feel like you guys would be mad at me <laughs> I feel like you guys would be mad at me and I'd be mad at myself to be honest more importantly I'd be mad at myself because I feel like this channel speaks to a lot of just lifestyle mental health you know it speaks to a lot of let's have a good time with the candid with cat let's advise each other let's grow together with advice with cat and all of that so these are really important aspects of what this channel is about but i could just simply do one vlog tell me tell me let me know what you guys would like me to do i could just simply do one vlog and release one video a uh week I could do that and free up a lot of my time uh, and actually get a, a chance to do other things I have also been toying with the idea of having a membership channel now that will help me as a content creator by um, monetary value wise you know what I'm saying but obviously they'd have to be exclusive content on that channel things that you will never really see on my vlog on my just got a whata whata channel but i'm trying to think about what is it else that i would share with you guys that the introvert in me would allow because there's just a lot that i wouldn't share i mean if i had a membership channel and i was talking about okay let me share my relationship on there let me you know include him which i'm never gonna do see already that defeats the purpose of having a membership channel and all of that so i'm trying to think about if i do have one where you'd have to pay a monthly fee to watch whatever whatever's on there how often do i upload content onto that platform and also what kind of content do i upload onto that platform so i'm, I'm toying with the idea let me know let me know what you guys think of it um but yeah that's that's where I'm at right now okay so what's also become hard to do is create content when ESCOM which is our energy provider our electricity provider decides to cut power at any given point where they want to cut. okay well they notify us they always tell us that okay girl between 12 and 3 you won't have power and then you won't have power again between 8 and 4 or whatever 8 and 4 you get my gist right so it's been really hard to on the days where i've managed to leave work early record content when there's no power i can't do it but then i'm just like give like a and then i just read or do something else you know so it's a bit tricky man it's a bit tricky to try and manage and juggle all of that uh the podcast i'm so so happy with uh the podcast i've been diligent and i've been uploading you know the focus the focus gents the focus is there and i've been uploading podcast episodes on there one a week i thought it would be a bi-weekly podcast but then i realized i'm enjoying it quite a lot so one week i'll have a tidbit corner kind of situation which is a shorter one and then the following week i'll have something longer and that's been working out quite well so that's great too um aside from that i try to spend my weekends with my friends and my loved ones and uh i try to also relax over the weekends which is really hard to do especially when you're when you're like me where, where you want to constantly be busy and you want to constantly be working hence why i'm a high functioning anxiety individual because I don't mind working it's just it's weird it's weird but I don't mind working so it's good tricky trying to balance that whole act out but yeah man uh, based on what I've just said please do me a favor and comment in the comment section below what do you think I should do and also please be very aware of when you are watching my content to like and to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already it'll help me out so so much and then i might do a membership channel so we'll see we'll see i already have a ton on my plate i don't know who the i think i am uh i went out i was not home for the whole weekend i was with my partner this that past weekend and i was at his place so there's not much to vlog if i'm not home you know what i'm saying uh but we had a good time we went out friday no 
stayed in and watched the Adam Project. <laughs> okay, we watched the Adam Project on Friday, and um, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. I think it started off quite strong. I really love Ryan Reynolds, and I think I've mentioned that before on this channel. Love it. Love him. Love him. If he's willing to take Tepu, is Tembu take a second wife? We could talk about it. We could talk about it. Um, so I watched it. I enjoyed it in the beginning. I felt like it started off quite strong. But then towards the end, I, I don't know. It kind of fell off a little bit for me. Uh, but uh, it's, it's quite good. It's a good movie. Uh, quite entertaining. So it does what it needs to do in terms of the entertainment factor. But for... Uh, I thought it was... It was it was good. It was alright. It was alright. Um... Then on Saturday, we went out and um, we went to one of my favorite restaurants in Johannesburg is Tasha's but Le Park, the one that's in Hyde Park. <gasps> I love it because the menu is more extensive and uh, it's just got nicer things. It really does. It doesn't have the standard menu that you get at the Tasha's all over Johannesburg. That one is different. And I really, really like that one. So that's where we went. And then afterwards, we went for a drink. I'll insert all the footage as I talk. And then afterwards, we went for a drink uh, at um, the deck in Hyde Park, pretty much upstairs. And um, yeah, then then we came back home and we had a braai. And it was just a braai for two. It was wonderful. But uh, I really wish sometimes that I could show you guys that kind of footage. But you know what it is. You know what it is. I, I can't. I can't. And I'm with somebody who appreciates their privacy. So it'd be like that sometimes. And uh, Sunday, we went out uh, for a drink in the afternoon. And we, we kind of hung out, you know. And then we came back home and went to bed. And then Monday was yesterday. So here we are. Um, otherwise, that's pretty much it. What else do I want to share? I'm going to tell you about the books that I am currently reading. Uh, and one that I want to start today. And ones that I bought last week. Because when I'm in a funk, I want to buy a book. And then I ended up buying three. So, I guess it'd be like that sometimes. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I cooked fish yesterday. I had a bit of fish. I do have that fish left over. Maybe I could do something. I don't know. But I was trying to film some food content for you guys. Hence how I took out the, 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 the chicken. We'll see how it goes. Uh, yeah. So I think now we're going to move. And I'm going to show you the books that I got in my little bookish corner of the house. Which is not a corner. It's, it's a whole entire room. Uh, and show you the books that I picked up. And then... <laughs> I'm gonna go upstairs and show you what I've decluttered uh, and and where we're at when it comes to that and then <laughs> I'm just thinking about all the things that I had planned to share with you in this vlog uh, but yeah this vlog is pretty much maybe gonna be me talking to you guys and me being in the house nothing really interesting because I work during the week I go to work and um, I come back and I hang out at home so We'll talk. Hey, podcasters. Ooh, SABC got an internship program. That's nice. Mm, operations. SABC got an internship program, uh, South Africans. Who are watching sabc has got an internship program i hope you have heard me and you are going on there and having a look okay radio 2000 digital assistant account executive technical operator mm. okay let me make this call chair Of the three books that I picked up last week when I was going through my mental funk 
uh, one of them is Beach Read by Emily Henry. Now, I have, I don't read romance much, okay? I tend to visit it. I like to visit romance and I like to just indulge in the romantic part of life, you know, how relationships could just be so wonderful, even though there's struggles here and there and whatever. But I typically don't read romance much. Uh, I prefer my thrillers and I prefer just normal adult contemporary novels. Um, and I'm starting to get into nonfiction as well. I am reading a nonfiction book right now, but I'm reading it in small increments. I'll show you which one it is. It's upstairs. So, uh, I picked up Beach Read because it's everywhere. Okay. And I've heard that it is a romance novel, but it's not really soppy soppy and smutty smutty and this is by emily henry and it says two writers one holiday a rom-com waiting to happen and i mean i'm excited to read it um it's great sounds great uh i love the cover i've seen the american cover of this book um and i'm not really a fan of that one so i really really like this one i think the colors are lovely these uh pastel colors really really nice so can't wait to read that and uh, the other one that i picked up is by cj tudor now i read last year i read the burning girls by uh cj tudor and i absolutely loved it so when i saw this one going for i think it was going for 69 or something uh how much was it going for yeah i think it was going for like bomanyana 69 or something but it really wasn't that pricey I picked it up and uh, this is The Other People by CJ Tudor. Driving home one night, Gabe sees the face of a little girl he knows in the rear window of the car in front. She mouths one word, Daddy. Daddy. He never sees this five-year-old daughter, Izzy, again. The police believe she's dead, but three years later, Gabe still drives the roads searching for the car that took Izzy and never giving up hope. Mm, jump on that really really excited for this one i'm gonna go upstairs and show you uh the other books two uh one that i read last week i finished evelyn hugo last week and what a wow where is evelyn hugo anyway where you at hugo here here she is <laughs> here she is i finished evelyn hugo last week and i absolutely loved it i highly recommend that you read that book just if you want to like read something nice easy really really loved it not going to talk too much about it because i'm sure there is a million and one um reviews on evelyn hugo online so you can check it out that way uh but i did touch on it in the previous vlog so i'm not gonna mm -hmm. i'm not gonna do that um so let's go upstairs and let's go talk about some of the things that I want to share with you up there. Uh, but for now, yeah, still chilling. I need to, I need to figure out what I'm going to read next. So let's go upstairs. But I want to talk to you first about this plant that's behind me. She is losing her shit. Okay. She's growing like crazy. And at this point, I don't even know what to do. It's, it's growing so tall that it's actually starting to bend over. And I, I can see now that I'm going to need like a stick or something just to hold it in place so that I hold it straight. And I just realized now that there's another leaf growing. So I'm just like, wish more. What am I doing right? I mean, I love it, but what am I doing right with this one? Because the other one is struggling a little bit and that one worries me. Let me Do you show. see her? Okay. Do you see her? And now this is what I just realized just before I sat down. Did not see her growing last week. But here she is, nevertheless. And there's another one coming in right there. It's, it's nuts. It's actually starting to bend. So that's, I need to get something to just kind of straighten it out so it's like that. But it's fine. We're working on it. We're working on it. Not only that, I discovered the other day that uh, Love, Marriage and Divorce is back on Netflix. And I'm all caught up. There's like five or six episodes. And I'm just like... <laughs> I have a lot to say, okay? I have a lot to say, but we'll talk about that later, okay? We'll talk and about here's it. Here's my baby girl who seems to be struggling a little bit. Now, as you can see, down here, I took off all the leaves, stems, whatever you want to call it, that were dying out. 
and there's some new ones growing in as you can see the lighter green are the new ones that are growing in and i'm trying to heal her i'm trying to bring her back to life because uh, she is struggling a little bit i'm going to throw those out just now but she still looks amazing and i really don't want to lose this plant i really don't want to lose this plant it's so beautiful i really don't want to lose it so i'm using some foliage something uh in a spray like bottle and i am spraying it all over because it seemed like the plant was getting some sort of uh, is it the virus is it the sickness it was sick with these little white dots on it and last time around i actually bought this thing that's gonna this powder that you mix with water that's gonna help it with that so every two three days i come in and i spray the whole entire plant um, and then I take out what's dying because it's really important to do that or else it's going to spread. And uh, yeah, hoping for the best. She looks so beautiful. I think I want another one that's similar to that one so that I can put it up there on the landing of the stairs. Right up. Jolan, guys. Okay? Because I left this at my partner's. Whoops! Oh. Maybe I shouldn't talk about it then. But I'd left this. These are two dresses in here and one top at my partner's place. And I asked him to bring them back. So I asked him to bring it back, to bring them back. And he did. And it's all wrapped up and everything. Ah, gents, jolang, eh? Um, not to jolo vil, gents. Hey, it's very, very nice there. Um, but yeah, I, I am embarrassed to say that it's been sitting here for like two weeks. Let's go put it away. Just pulled up to the house Don't feel like it now I'ma just lay back and crack this window I've been doing my best Back in the office I'm in the office right now And I wanted to show you the books that The other book that I picked up Which is not really a book But I'll show you uh, It's not really a novel It's not really a novel but I'll show you. The one that I did finish last week while we were being load shed like crazy and it, it took me literally two days to read uh, is this one which is The Perfect Nine by Ngugi Wationgo who is, he's known as, like Chimamanda said, one of the greatest writers of our time. But he is put right up there with the likes of Ben Okri, with the likes of... Uh, uh, Chinua Achebe, he's known as one of the greats when it comes to uh, African literature and African authors. And this is The Perfect Nine, which basically follows um, Gyu Gyuku and Mumbi. I'm so sorry for the mispronunciation. Uh, if there's anybody who is Kenyan, please, please put me on. Okay, put me on in the description below, in the comments below. Um, and it follows Gyuku and Mumbi, who uh, settled in the peaceful and bounteous foot of Mount Kenya after fleeing war and hunger. And this book is essentially uh, written in verse. So it was really, really quick to get through. Like there's, you know, you can see, and there's pictures there. Um, it was really, really quick to get through, but very enjoyable. It follows uh, their nine daughters. And once they come of age, uh, there are suitors who come looking for these nine girls. Now, they don't know that there's nine girls, but they come from all over looking for these um, women, right? And essentially, it's very mythical, like a lot of things happen. And as they arrive the parents send them off to find something in uh to go catch the moon <laughs> um to find something that is going to heal the 10th daughter who is um disabled and cannot walk and in that time as they set off on their quest a lot of things happen they encounter a lot of mythical creatures and they encounter a lot of things along their quest to try and find this magical potion or magical healing uh, 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 thing 
sorry i can't really say what it is but this healing thing that's going to help the 10th daughter even though she is also included as the nine as the perfect nine but she's the 10th daughter so really really enjoyed it uh, it was a little bit hard to get into in terms of just not used to that style of writing but i really enjoyed it once the action kind of picked up and you know they went along on their quests and met up with a bunch of ogres along the way and had to use their smarts um to defeat the different types of ogres and i really really enjoyed it uh it was mythical and just folklore and just allegory and i really really liked it so uh, I think, yeah, I was first time reading uh, anything by Ngugi Wa Tiongo, and I enjoyed it, so might try that out. I am a big fan of Chinua Chebe, I'm a big fan of uh, Wallace Onyika, I'm a big fan of just the greats, the Ben Okris, love, love, love some of their stuff, and I've read a couple of their novels but years ago when i was still in varsity and all of that so uh this was nice this was nice to read and then this i really <laughs> this one was an impulse buy i think this one was like oh this one was it also 79 bucks or something from bargain books the cover is beautiful the cover is beautiful and it's love letters of great men now if you have heard of that uh sentence line before you may have picked it up from sex and the city there's a part where uh bill is in bed big <laughs> bill where big is in bed with um carrie and carrie is reading something and she says she's reading the love letters of great men and this is it what i did start last week while i was reading from Ngugi Wationgo is this. This is what happened to you, Conversations on Trauma, Resilience and Healing by Bruce D. Perry, who is a doctor, PhD, MD, PhD, a psychiatrist, and Oprah Winfrey. Now, this is hard to read, especially if you are somebody who's dealt with some kind of trauma or mental illness or uh, struggle growing up. But I feel like we all have some sort of struggle from growing up from our childhoods. And um, it was really, really hard to read. And I read it. I started reading it at a time where I shouldn't have read it. That's why I stopped because I was going through a mental health funk. Um, so I'm about 30 pages in. Yep. I'm about 30 pages in. And it essentially looks at how the traumas that one experiences in their childhood fundamentally impacts their perspective on life as grown-ups and as adults and not only just emotionally or uh, physically but really psychologically so something happens with your brain that affects how you uh, perceive the world as a grown-up and how you um, handle relationships as a grown-up and the one part that I read was talking about how there are different parts of the brain I actually wrote down notes in there as well how there are different parts of the brain and uh, there's a part of the brain that's responsible for thinking and that's that's the more complex part of the brain right that's the that's the um, um, that's the cortex part of the brain. So it's responsible for thinking, it's responsible for creatively, you know, writing, for being creative and coming up with certain, you know, ideas and all of that. And then there's the brain stem, which is the part of the brain that we don't really control, right? And that is uh, breathing, your brain reminding you to breathe or keeping your body temperature, that kind of thing. And it was talking about how those two parts of the brain sometimes, excuse me, I'm talking about something serious. That how sometimes there's a glitch between those two functioning parts of the brain. Because you, you know you'll find that you're out somewhere and you immediately hear something. Like you hear something that's very similar to a gunshot or you hear something that's very similar, just a loud bang, right? And when you were growing up, you went through a traumatic experience of where gunshots were 
a thing and and they are attached to a very difficult negative uh, memory in your brain so what happens is the cortex and the brainstem of the brain have a little bit of a glitch so what you are thinking in that moment when you hear the gunshot which is the cortex part of the brain immediately gets intercepted by the brainstem so you can't necessarily get control of you know realizing that oh no it's just a a, a pop from whatever it's just a loud bang or a loud sound you automatically get transported to that moment in time when you were growing up and it completely inhibits you and affects you in that exact moment therefore you can't control it so brain stem right and i was just like oh, this is so interesting so it really is interesting but uh it's 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 hey amen it's touched on how my sister always says i hold i hold i keep things i find it really difficult to let things go which is very true and something that i read in there talks about in those 30 pages can you imagine in 30 pages just receiving such a wealth of knowledge something that i read there in those 30 pages said something about you know keeping things uh, to yourself as a grown-up and struggling to let things go because when you were growing up when you were a child you've always either had to share some of the things that you've had or food that you eat or whatever with siblings or you never got an opportunity to have some of those things so you keep them and you struggle to let things go as a grown-up because of that little moment that memory where you know that when you were growing up you never really had anything that was entirely yours that you didn't have to share or you just didn't have it period and i was just like phenomenal phenomenal it's so great to actually read something that you're learning something from as well um yeah that's a whole lot of talking i've been talking for 10 minutes my bad it'd be like that sometimes um and right now i'm looking at some of the shoes that i put on my yaga store um so yeah if you're interested in what those shoes look like you can just pop into the yaga store there's some shoes there by nine west three from nine west some from woolies cotton on and a pair from aldo so if you're interested go have a look uh most of them are size three so you're looking at a 36 i've got small feet okay uh some are a four so Check them out if you're interested okay there's something that i actually picked up at checkers yes last week not yesterday i picked up at checkers last week and it's downstairs so i'm going to show you what that is um and i found them just so adorable and i thought i'm going to share that with you guys before i start taking them out and taking pictures with them and doing all those things uh so we're gonna go back downstairs guess it'll be like that sometimes let's go Ah, oh, love her. Did you get her? All I right. love her. What, which one is this one? What's going on? Okay, um, right. So last week I picked up, I think, two things from Checkers. And I was just like, this is so cute. Now, let me tell you something about me and Checkers, right? I don't normally go into the um, home decor section of Checkers. If I'm in Checkers, I'm buying food. Or I'm buying something, but I'm hardly ever uh, in the home decor section. But I, I, I see people finding really nice gems and checkers, man. And I was just like, take a walk through. Take a walk through, see what you can find. And uh, I found three things, two of which are the same. And then the other one is different. Now, <laughs> I found this adorable glass. Look at this. Look at that glass. I don't know exactly what made me pick up this glass, but I got it and I got two of them and I thought this would look so lovely in pictures and it's very retro. For me, it reminds me of, you know, when you're growing up and you're around adults who drank beer and all of that or some sort of alcoholic beverage, the glasses would always have some sort of texture on them. If it wasn't like lines or whatever, it, it's so retro and vintage looking for me and I really, really love it. As somebody who likes to drink uh, straights, or uh, spirits 
I would love a glass of gin in this and picture and take a picture and take a shot of it because I think it would be so pretty uh, with a lemon in there. Man, I just, I, trust me, I am the last person who needs new glasses. I've got, my kitchen is fully stocked. I do not need, the only thing I really would like is an air fryer or a pressure cooker, a new pressure cooker because the old one that is just old, bro. But aside from that, when it comes to cutlery and all of that, plates and things, I do not need anything else. Trust you me. But I went ahead and I got this. So, I don't know, chair. Don't even judge me today. So I got two of them, which is great. And then, you're gonna kill me for this one, okay? You're gonna kill me for this one. But I got a mug. Look at this mug, it actually matches with my top. And I never saw that coming. This was not planned. Do you understand? Okay. Look at this mug. Look how pretty this mug is. <laughs> Look at this mug. Look at this mug. It matches with my nails. It matches with my top. And it's it's um, ceramic here at the bottom. And and then it's color and glossy at the top. So it's it's not, it's matte down here. It's matte down here. And then it's glossy at the top. And I feel like it's gorgeous i just felt like oh my god and it came in different colors as well and i just picked up one because i have a very unhealthy obsession with mugs and uh, i'm thinking that it is maybe also time to let go of some mugs and that will also go on to my yoga store because everything is going to go on to my yoga store things that i'm just trying to declutter my life and i'm hoping that you guys are watching me and going girl girl Okay, that's all I'm hoping. Uh, let me just pause this. I'm listening to a podcast, and I don't think I can say as yet whose podcast I'm listening to because she just she just kind of uses it as a bit of a diary, and not I don't know, you know. But once I do get the green light from her to mention it, then I'll talk talk to you guys about it. So I'm about to cook, and uh, as I said earlier on, I'd taken out some chicken fillets, and in truth. I have fish in the fridge. I said that I cooked the fish yesterday. And to be honest, if I make this chicken, that fish is gonna spoil. And I know that, you know, fish can't sit too long in the oils um, because something about it detoxing or deoxidizing or whatever, something like that. And um, I'm just thinking to myself, you know what, no. Eat the fish you cooked. Okay, eat the fish you cook, sis. I cooked some Cape Whiting fish yesterday. And uh, it was really, really good. Really, really loved it, enjoyed it. I did it with a bit of uh, fish spice. I grilled it and all of that in the oven. It was lovely, lovely. And I've got um, two of the fillets left over. So I'm gonna have that for dinner in a grain bowl. Now, normally I love bowls i'm somebody who loves buddha bowls i love listen mexican bowls i love taco bowls i love anything bowl i gosh guys i've got a recipe book for just bowls so you you can understand me get my check so i've got some lettuce i've got avocado i've got uh heirloom tomatoes i've got some stuff cucumbers whatever so i tend to try and eat very healthy especially at night um if it's during the week if i'm not just having a piece of meat if i'm having something then i tend to make it very healthy because if i have a lot of greens and vegetables and all of that in my plate at night i often wake up feeling really really good my bowels feel really really good they function and work correctly uh, so i try not to be too heavy on uh things that involve a lot of carbohydrates and starch and all of that so things like pasta i'll have every once in a while especially at night i can do pasta during the day uh for like lunch uh but then at night i'll always close of my eating habits in the evenings with something green and full of f fruits vegetables that kind of thing so the bowl that i'm thinking of making now is a grain bowl and grain because i'm going to be using quinoa now i haven't cooked quinoa in a minute 
I often just like my quinoa pre-cooked, pre-done. Quinoa salads from Woolies are a thing. I buy them all the time. Uh, but I'm going to make it today. And I'm going to show you how I make it. And I hope it comes out nice, thick, fluffy, fresh. Yeah, beautiful. Um, I'm going to make it now, earlier on. And then when I prepare my dish, which will be in... It's 5 o'clock now. So when I prepare my dish, which will be around 6.30 then i'll switch on the camera again i'm only doing the quinoa now so that it fluffs up it cools down before i plate it i don't want to plate it when it's too okay hot. bought you a little bit lower oh i need to charge my battery so that's really important i'm going to charge it after i make the quinoa so that i can prepare the meal with a camera that's going to work so here we go bowl quinoa and Always, always remember one cup of quinoa, dependent on how much quinoa you, you uh, uh, need or use or whatever. One cup of quinoa to two cups of water. So anything goes, right? So I'm going to start with the water. I'm going to put the stove on high, which is for me five so we're going to bring the water to a boil so it's going to be two cups of water right to the brim uh one oh i didn't even rinse my jeez all right now it's out okay so two cups of water one And we're gonna put that onto the stove for it to come to a boil. While it's on here, what I'm gonna do is add my seasoning, right? So pepper for me, great. I'm gonna add a bit of that pepper so that when it comes to a boil, it does its thing. Right, and then what I'm gonna add is a teaspoon of turmeric. I really, really like turmeric, and when turmeric blends in with pepper, oh my god, the flavors that comes out of there, mwah, beautiful. Ooh, okay, so that's pretty much almost a teaspoon, and then I'm just gonna whiz that around a little bit. Be sure not to scratch. I'm just doing it very lightly, not scratching the pan. And then we're just going to bring it to a boil. So here we are. We're boiling. Wow. The water has gone completely almost red, really, at this point. So we're going to add, like I said, one cup of, ooh, ooh. One cup of the quinoa, which a little bit of it has gone onto my stove top. So let's just get that out of there before it burns, honey. It's going to burn. It's going to burn. Okay. So here we go. Got the turmeric in there. Ooh, cha. I'm going to throw that in there. Ah, it's in there. It's in there. And let's get the rest of it in there. Oh, I forgot to rinse it out. Oh, I forgot to rinse it out. It's fine. It's fine. We're going to do a taste test afterwards. But I do recommend that you actually rinse it because it has a little bit of a film on top of it. So I do recommend that you rinse it. So as soon as you've done this, you bring down the heat to low. Medium to low. Okay. So that's what we're going to do. Uh-huh, I'm going to bring it down to two, and then you cover it up. There we go. I'm, I just want to taste salt-wise. Perfect. It tastes all right. Cover it up, and you keep it on low for about 12 to 15 minutes. Okay, so it's 15 minutes later. Now... You switch off the heat, which I just did right now, but instead of removing or hold or open, instead of removing it off the heat or opening up the lid, keep it on here for another five minutes. 
so that it just gives the quinoa time to set fluff up a little bit and for any excess liquid to actually soak into the quinoa we do the same thing same process with bulgur wheat as well you keep the lid on for a good five to ten minutes before you open it up and you start fluffing it up that makes sure that it's nice it's fluffy there's no excess um, uh, moisture in it and then after that five minutes or so then I put it aside and then I get ready to serve much later on. So it looks good. It looks like it's uh, fluffed up a little bit. I don't know if you guys can see that, but I can see that. Okay. And um, after the next five minutes or so, then I'm going to open it up and show you how it looks. So it's 6.30 and I am going to prepare my bowl and this is what I'm going to put in the bowl. Now I don't have a huge appetite in the evenings so I'm going to make a really small bowl which might have some of you thinking seriously sis but seriously that's me. Okay so we're going to have some heirloom tomatoes. I picked out the orange and the red ones because there's green coming from the cucumber green from the lettuce this is butter lettuce avocado green and then what i'm gonna uh, have on top there are these crunchy mix sprouts these are from woolworths really can't wait to try these out i don't think i've had them in the house but i think i may have had them in a salad when i was out and about so i want to try those out and then of course our quinoa is ready fluffy beautiful and then i'm going to get out the fish and then we're going to have the fish on top. So let me prepare everything. I'm going to dish it out onto the plate. And then we're going to do a taste So there it is that's how it turned out got my water with lemon in a glass and honey am I ready yes I already know how most of these things turn out because I eat them almost every day uh, but we're, ju we're just gonna get everything in there oh oh let me tell you that balsamic reduction enhances every single salad you could ever possibly make and it's always better to have it with balsamic reduction for me personally because you don't drizzle on as much as you typically would a salad dressing and salad dressings have a lot of stuff in them okay they've got a lot of preservatives sugar all those things but balsamic to just go tips a little bit and that's it it's wonderful it's crunchy the quinoa turned out perfectly considering that i hadn't cooked it in such a long time so i'm really excited about that but damn y'all <laughs> i'm just like why didn't you become a chef though <laughs> oh it's so good took pictures did a little bit of a reel for instagram so if you're on instagram 
and you're not following me follow me on there because a lot of the time if I cook something or if I make something in the kitchen I will always put it in a reel half the time now nah, 80% of the time I'll put it in a reel, especially if it's something that I haven't prepared before. Everything else you know for me is always a standard. Greens on my plate are always a standard. You'll hardly ever catch me just doing a pasta without anything green in it. There'll always be some mixed herbs, mixed veggies, mixed whatever. Always a thing. Always a thing, chat. But this... Mmm... Mmm. Mwah. Mm. It just makes my insides go, yes. Something healthy, yes. And I just sent Palisa some pictures of what I've just prepared. And let's see what she says. Batong, baby. Wow, this looks incredible. A cookbook feature. I'm just like, I mean, I guess. <laughs> Uh, it's a short vlog and I'm going to start the next vlog tomorrow when I do the podcast stuff. And that's pretty much it. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'm going to go. If you did enjoy the video, please click subscribe, click the bell. Also follow me on Instagram. It really helps me out a lot. We are on the road to 30k uh, subscribers. So, so excited for it. Hoping that we can get there really, really soon. I need you guys to help me out on that one. But that's pretty much it from me. Until then, I'll see you soon. Otherwise, sayonara. Bye.